Oh, hi. Welcome back. This is this week's piece, and it's not a great one. It's a really cute little French provincial dresser. It is just a vintage one. It is not made of solid wood. I typically don't pick them up, but it was $5 and came with a vanity that I actually wanted. So I grabbed it and thought, well, I can do something with it. So I'm going to remove the hardware, check everything out. As you can see, this one had a dro broken drawer glide, which is an easy fix. It just needed a little glue on that section there. You can completely replace them, but for something like this, when it was still functioning as it was, it's just not too hard to just glue it back down. And we're going back to the liquid sandpaper. This stuff is just one of my most favorite cleaners for older pieces. You go over it with the liquid sandpaper, which has a degreaser in it. And then I also use a Scotch-Brite pad, which gives it a bit of a scuff sand as you're working and cleaning everything. So it's kind of a two for one, which is awesome. And then I'm going to use my primer on this. I almost always use this light gray color because it's light enough to go under white and it's better than white to go under dark colors. So it's just the one that I always have on hand. And it's actually really great for blocking in the stains that could potentially pop through from these icky yellow drawers so I don't want that to come through my paint so I'm gonna block this up with some primer and then because I know I'm going to be doing the tissue paper on the drawer fronts this is also a great base color for the paper that I'm using so you know we're killing all kinds of birds here with very minimal stones I am using a foam roller to apply this it's my favorite way sometimes I'll hit a chip brush into harder to reach areas, but typically the foam roller is the easiest for me. And I like the finish that it gives, so it works. And then between my coats, I use a sanding block. So after every coat I do, and I mean every coat, so if it's primer or paint or top coat, it all gets a light sand. So this is the paper I'm gonna be using on this piece. I'm just cutting them down to a generalized size. So I make sure it overlaps top and bottom, left and right, so that it's not too close and I'm not accidentally missing anything. And I'm taking my Chalk Mountain Satin Poly, throwing some on there, getting it spread out. I typically add a little extra around the edges and then just slowly lay it down. This is a really simple process. This is great for beginners because you're doing drawer fronts and there's easy edges for you to have a clean finish on. Now this top drawer has kind of this carved piece on it, just a little wooden applique. If your dresser doesn't have that, it'll be even easier. But this is actually okay to work with. We're just gonna use our sanding block the same way we would with any other piece. But again, trimming the paper down to fit the drawers, making sure that there's a little overlap everywhere, adding the poly, brushing it out. Again, you always wanna make sure you have a little extra around the edges just because it's going to make sure that those edges really stick down. And here I'm just sticking down one side and then going to the other in little sections because the tissue paper is a little thin and it's hard to like pull and stretch it without tearing it. So if you work in smaller sections like this, it's a little easier to control wrinkling and things like that. So I'm not gonna use a brayer with this. I don't care if there's a couple wrinkles in it. The pattern's not so crazy that you're gonna be able to see anything anyways, so. And then once you get it laid down, you're just gonna run over the entire thing with a coat of poly. So after that's dried, you're going to take your sanding block, sponge, paper, whatever you're using, and run it along the edge of your paper and your piece. You kind of rub it away from the piece downwards, and then you'll get a really, really smooth, perfect finish around the edge. So this part here is a little trickier because it has all those curvy edges but I'm using a sanding sponge because the sponge is kind of contoured to the edges of the piece and it makes it just a little easier to, to do. You can also do this with a small folded up piece of sandpaper and that's fine. Or 
If you want to, you can use a razor blade and go around it. But I typically don't do razor blades with tissue paper. You totally can, but tissue paper is a bit flimsier. So razor blades don't like to cut through it as well. So I find that sanding blocks are really, really effective with tissue paper. And then I'm using this gorgeous purple plum color. And this is going to be just the very, very bottom of this dresser. So I took a poll on Instagram to see if this should be a blended piece or a solid piece. And the poll was 30% of people wanted it blended and 70% of people wanted it a solid color. So I literally blended 30% and then did the rest of it solid. And that's how I came up with this idea. I feel like my area kind of knows me for having blends on my pieces as well. So it's just kind of fun to throw it in there so that it's recognizable as at least something that I've done. So you could use Pink Night Skies for this. This is a custom mixed color that I have of several different ones. I probably couldn't even tell you what it is anymore. I just kind of have it and I used it for this specific tissue paper on another project. So I already had it on hand. It's got some purple and pink in it, probably a little bit of Woodland Harbor, just to tone it to a color that I like. But so I've got the purple plum down. You go a little higher than where you want it to end and then you add the pink and you're gonna put the pink a little lower and that's gonna give you a nice blend in the middle. And I really like using the long skinny brushes on small areas like this because one side you can keep one color and the other side you can keep the other color and it helps you blend between the two. I really hope that makes sense. So I'll keep the brush facing one way when I'm trying to blend the two colors together. So purple will go on the bottom and pink will go on the top and as I work up and down with it, the bristles mix and the top of the pink never hits the purple and the bottom of the purple never hits the pink. So this is light khaki and it is just the creamiest, not white ever. It's so pretty and it actually looks pretty white on this piece. But in comparison to Mellow White, which is Chalk Mountain's, it's my favorite white that Chalk Mountain carries, but it's just, this color is just a little more rich and not as bright. So it's a great cream without being that too antique looking cream, if you know what I mean. So for this color, I actually have a separate blending brush that is not a pink or a purple or a light khaki, it's a blank brush. And I'm using it between the light khaki and the pink color because they're so far apart that I don't want to, one, ruin my khaki brush for the entire rest of the piece that I'm going to do and have pink on it. And I don't want to add too much of the light khaki into the pink. So this is one scenario where I would use a blank kind of blending transition brush to mix those two colors together. And I just go back and forth with it. I clean it off as I go. I usually wipe it on my drop cloth, nothing too crazy, and just make sure that it's something that looks good and smooth. And eventually, like the very bottom there, we'll have just a very, very soft almost like baby pink color that will easily transition into the light khaki instead of going from that really, really bright pink. So this is a really easy blend because it's so small and it stays very close to the bottom and the bottom part of the dresser has kind of that ridge there that also helps break up the blend. So again, good for beginners. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the second coat. Again, I did sand between these coats. I didn't show it every time, but I do do that and I'm doing the exact same process only if there's something that I didn't like or something that was too purple in one area or too pink I kind of adjust as I please now I do want to make mention this blend is totally unnecessary with this piece because the drawers are kind of busy it's enough to just have those and have just the solid color around the paper and it would have been beautiful and just fine so you don't have to blend with this it's not necessary I just think it's fun and I threw it in and I even I just did it at the very bottom to add just a little something but the whole rest of the piece surrounding the drawers is that one solid color so that it's just not too much all over the piece. 
So I sprayed the hardware with some rose gold coloring. It looks like copper on the lid. It's not, it's like a rose gold color from Rust-Oleum. And then I seal that in with like a lacquer over the top just to give it some extra protection. While that's drying, I will go over, sand the entire piece again. As you can see, that's the light khaki everywhere and it doesn't look like khaki. It just looks like such a refreshing, light, lovely color, but not too white. And then I'm sealing the whole piece in my satin poly. I'm going over the drawers again, just because I want some extra protection. I am anticipating that this dresser will go into a little girl's room and kids are hard on stuff, so extra, extra protection. I'm also sealing this before I go on to the next step for easy cleanup. If you're working in different steps like this and you find that you make a mistake on the next one, if your piece is sealed, you can always wipe it back or fix any issues that you may have with your current step. But I'll go over that when we get to it. I am using this foam brush. To, it's my hands down favorite, favorite foam brush to apply poly with. My favorite was the Wooster and I found this one and it's awesome because it has exchangeable heads. Like it comes with in like a pack with three additional heads with it, which I just really appreciate. So we're going to put the hardware back on as you do. All right, we're doing something really fun. I've got the Chalk Mountain Glazing Dust out in bronze, which is an incredibly shimmery metallic, and red. So I'm doing the smallest amount of red ever, and all it's going to do is tint this into a rose gold color. I mix it up with my satin poly, and now I have an awesome metallic striping medium to accent my piece with. So I apply this with an artist brush, over a sealed surface. I make sure that my surface has already been sealed with satin poly in case I make a mistake, I can just wipe it right off. No harm, no foul. Now this is a little bit sheer. If you don't like it that sheer, you can add more glazing dust, but I'm gonna do two coats anyways, and two coats will give me full coverage. And I just love that this adds so much fans to my pieces. It is stunning. Thank you. 